Well, I mentioned irony in the sports world, and it's ironic that our next inductee we're finishing with him, giving his prowess as the most prolific finisher in the history of the men's soccer program. The right, we dragged him all the way up from Arkansas for this video. So, let's find out about Chris Pryor. When Chris Pryor arrived on the Gettysburg campus in the fall of 1996, the men's soccer program was establishing itself as a prominent figure in the regional and national standings with a strong core of skilled players. The graduate of the Lawrenceville School in New Jersey infused the program with new energy and invaluable leadership that translated to even bigger things on the soccer pitch. Well, I think that, you know, Chris was surrounded by a lot of good players and, and that certainly helps any, any soccer player who, especially an attacking player who scores a lot of goals, will tell you that there's an awful lot of work being done on the field for you to be able to, to finish it off, if you will. His explosion as a sophomore, I think, was him gaining that first year of college soccer under his belt, realizing I can do this and I can do it at a high level, even as a sophomore, gained that confidence, and then used his soccer intelligence, quite honestly, to really catapult himself and our team at that point. After a strong start to his collegiate career, Pryor's star took a meteoric path in 1997 as the sophomore went off for 17 goals and 7 assists on the way to being named All-Conference First Team and All-Mid-Atlantic Region Second Team. The crowning moment of the season came against Centennial champ Muhlenberg in the NCAA Division III tournament when Pryor scored the game-winning goal in the 108th minute to lift the Bullets into the quarterfinals for the first time in program history. In 1998, Pryor and classmate Jason Vischio combined to score a total of 90 points by themselves as Gettysburg went on to win a program record 18 matches. You know, it's very difficult to find one person who is a goal scorer or, you know, somebody who is so attacking minded that they can, they can literally take over a game. Uh, we were blessed to have multiple players uh, and, and Chris was certainly one of them and a, and a key one at that. But, you know, we, we had a, a time when, you know, those two in particular, Jason Vischio and Chris Pryor, where, you know, they took turns. You know, if one, one was making the assist, the other was scoring the goal, and then the next minute it was, it was flipped around. And, and that script played out very nicely for us. We took advantage of, uh, of their success and their talents and their understanding of the game and, and the desire to be highly successful and became the most successful program in the school's history. For the first three seasons of Pryor's career, the Bullets came agonizingly close to the Centennial Conference Championship, finishing runner-up in both 1997 and 1998. The trend changed with Pryor serving as team captain in 1999 as Gettysburg finally captured the elusive crown, finishing unbeaten in nine conference contests. Pryor was named the Centennial Conference Player of the Year after leading the league in scoring with 38 points on 15 goals and 8 assists. Pryor finished his outstanding career as the program's all-time leading scorer with 127 career points, an honor he continues to hold today. You really saw Chris as the ultimate leader in his senior year. You know, he again, he was very magnetic in his personality and he was able to pull together, uh, you know, very different individuals from himself for the betterment of, of the cause. And they had come so close so many times, uh, three years in a row leading up to their senior year. And, you know, Chris was the, the rallying cry. You know, he was the one that was saying, you know, it was all about the team. It would have been easy for him as such a successful individual player uh, to really want to keep the spotlight on himself. But you saw a different Chris prior his senior year. He really wanted that the team to be able to achieve its goals. And he put the team on his back and, and really, um, you know, carried forward as a great leader, as, as our team captain and somebody who uh, made us all believe, you know, that it's, it's great that we are able to score all these goals and be successful as individuals. But boy, that, that, that team prize was going to be a lot more special. And it really was, you know, I think it paid off immensely when we were able to finally win a conference championship in his senior year. And, and I think if you asked him today what the greatest accomplishment was, it would, that would probably be the number one thing he would talk about. After graduating from Gettysburg with degrees in sociology and anthropology, Pryor went on to earn his master's in education from the University of Virginia. He has worked in administration at the high school level for the past two decades and currently serves as the assistant head for advancement 
at the Congressional School in Falls Church, Virginia. He and his wife Lauren have two children, Emma and Anderson. The most prolific scorer in the nine-decade-long history of men's soccer at Gettysburg, Chris Pryor can now lay claim to a spot in the Hall of Athletic Honor. Chris Pryor deserves to be inducted into the Gettysburg College Hall of Athletic Honor because he became the ultimate team player, the ultimate leader in, a, in, in the ultimate team sport. And for the Gettysburg College men's soccer program, he was able to take that program further than it ever had been before and has been ever since as one of its most prolific scorers, but also one of its greatest team members. And I'm proud of him for that. kids here to see this happen, but, uh, you know, I arrived in uh, 96 in August, it was very hot, I was very excited about playing college soccer, at least trying to make the team, there were 20 of us, 20 freshmen, and coach had us get our track shoes and walk over to the, uh, the track and say, okay, we're going to start the, the Cooper test. Well, I, I got a letter a couple months earlier saying what the Cooper test was, it's two miles in 12 minutes. I hadn't done much training for it. I just figured I could wing it. I was a good athlete and I, I would just make it happen. So I got paired up with Scott Metzger, who at the time was the co-captain of the, the team. And he took the first run and he finished in 12 minutes. He was a big stocky defender. And I thought, wow, that was impressive. It took me 16 minutes to finish the two miles uh, my freshman year. And um, that was certainly not the way I wanted to start my career at Gettysburg College. But, you know, fast forward to my sophomore year, and um, I remember we were sitting at a Wendy's. The team was off to a pretty good start. I had scored a couple goals. Uh, but I was having a, a, a frosty with, with Coach Wright, and I remember a very important question that I asked him, one that actually changed the trajectory of my career here. I said, how many goals do I need to score this season not to have to run the Cooper next year? And he said, 15. I said, done. I wound up scoring 17 goals that season. And uh, the reason that was important to me was because um, coach, you know, you knew what the standard was, and I never could make it. Um, so I had to get up at 6 a.m. in the morning and run with coach and his dog Blitz around the battlefields. At, but then that was before the three days that, uh, that took place in, uh, in August, which is, you know, steaming hot here. We never got those spring break trips to Hilton Head and other places. <laughs> we got Gettysburg in August. Uh, although I was promised a European travel trip, but I don't think we ever got that very much. Um, so, you know, the 17 goals was great, but what was even better is that that season we really went on a tear. And, and we were just winning games, we were clicking as a team, um, and we, you know, we took the team all the way to the Elite Eight. Uh, we had a home game here against the College of New Jersey, uh, which didn't work out as we had hoped. Um, we had a tremendous captain uh, at that time, his name was Greg Stezik, and he was inducted into the Hall of Honor two years ago. And Greg wasn't able to play that game, not because you know, he had an agony injury, it's because Greg had a mouth. And, and, and the ref decided that he had too many yellow cards in one game. And so, um, but that was, that, I think that was the year we had a shot to win the national championship. We had, we had home field advantage. It was a miserable day, it was raining, uh, and the College of New Jersey just, just bested us. But, um, you know, a few of my teammates are in the room tonight. And of course, as Coach mentioned, it's, it's a team sport. Um, and my personal success is obviously linked with, uh, you know, the quality of the players that I played with. Jason Vischio, who was mentioned in the in the video, was 
was my partner for four years up top. And uh, it was actually a pretty simple play, right? He'd pass the ball to me, or somebody would pass the ball to me, I would shield it, I'd send it on a diagonal run, Jason with his speed would run down the corner, I'd crash the goal, and he'd serve it back in, and I'd kick it in the net. I mean, it was, it was, it was pretty much that's how I probably got 30 goals, is Jason feeding the ball to me. And in 1999, he had the, uh, uh, the um, national record for assists. So Jason was a hell of a player, and um, I appreciated playing with him. But offense is one thing, and you need a good defense, right? And so I have uh, John Caterva here. John was, uh, was our goalie. Sorry. And Josh Rubinick was the sweeper. And these two guys, you know, they basically shut teams down. John still has records in both the, the college and the Centennial Conference for shutouts and career wins. And Josh was right in front of him for all that time, clearing the ball uh, and also bodies out of the way. Uh, so they were, they were great players. And uh, I played with many great players. Too many to mention here. Um, but there were two guys that I got to play with all four years uh, that aren't here. Uh, tonight, um, and that's Adam Outerbridge and, and Jesse Flynn, uh, and you know they played in the midfield, so they linked us from 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 the back to the front. But one of my favorite memories uh, at at the college it actually has nothing to do with the guys or the coaches. It's actually my mother, right? So we were playing at home against Franklin and Marshall, and Franklin and Marshall was on the list of colleges that I considered going to. I kind of did that Central Pennsylvania tour. And, um, you know, I come to find out afterward that my mom pulls the head coach of Franklin Marshall aside after the game. I mean, we, we torched them. I think I had a hat trick. And she goes, you really need to revamp your recruiting. <laughs> and he goes, Mrs. Pryor, thank you for letting me know. <laughs> and she said, my son really wanted to, you know, consider Franklin Marshall. And you never returned his letters. You know, he sent you clips. And uh, so, you know, it just, it's a, it's, it's a small story about how uh, my mother has always been my biggest supporter. You know, I've been soccer my entire life. And, uh, you know, I played in the backyard with my brother, who's here tonight. Thank you, David. David was a Division I soccer player, not that I'm bitter, but uh, he played at American University and had a fine career himself. Um, and I got to play at Lawrenceville, which was a wonderful high school for a great coach in Bill Treadway. And I got to play for a, a wonderful coach in Ted Terpstra, who's here tonight, uh, who flew all the way from California. He was my club coach, and we went to Denmark together. And I also played for two great coaches here at, uh, at Gettysburg, uh, Dave Wright. Uh, who sent me a brilliant note, uh, couldn't be with us, but Cindy's here, so thank you, Cindy. And uh, Ken Corbran, who is currently moving to Manioc and said he couldn't, he couldn't make it tonight. But uh, they were great people. They were very encouraging. They were very supportive. Uh, they trusted us, for the most part, uh, to make good decisions on and off the field. Um, and I, I'm eternally grateful for all the, the male mentors that I've had kind of growing up. The final goal of my career was scored, was scored actually against Franklin and Marshall, uh, ironically enough. Uh, not too far from that Wendy's where I think I asked that important question. Um, and it was assisted by Jason Vischio, of course. Uh, but what was kind of most interesting years later is that it was blocks away from my wife's childhood home. Uh, my wife is from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And uh, today we live outside of Washington, D.C. And soccer remains an important part of our lives. We, we go to soccer practice six out of, or soccer practice or games six out of seven days a week. Uh, my daughter, Emma, plays travel and is uh, work, working on her scissor and her finish. And I coach my son Anderson's first grade team with all of his classmates. Uh, and the, the two best hours of, of the weekend are definitely watching them compete watching them grow, watching them learn through sport. And as I watch today's team play, you know, I, I'm really inspired by what Coach, Coach Metric is doing here. Um, you know, under his leadership, the pro, program has certainly reemerged as a contender. Um, 
you know, he started this new alumni uh, community to support the current players um, in their in their employment and uh, mentoring, and I'm excited to be a part of that. Um, and he's teaching his players to kind of win the right way and uh, and to become, you know, to become real men. So I uh, I hope that that they do well tomorrow against Harvard. We will certainly be in the stands cheering for you, and. Uh, and I'm excited to see where the program goes moving forward. I also want to congratulate my fellow inductees. Um, you know, it's pretty amazing to see your accomplishments. We, we played around the same time, so I'm very familiar uh, with, with your success. Um, but, you know, Gettysburg has a long tradition of, of, of success in the athletic program. And uh, I look forward to coming back in future years and getting to wear my orange sash and, uh, and kind of honor others that, um, that follow us, you know, some of whom may be even in this room tonight. Uh, I also want to thank Gettysburg College and the Athletic Department and the Selection Committee. Uh, being inducted into the hall is, is a tremendous rec uh, recognition for me, but also for my family, and um, we are deeply appreciative. Um, but I want, to, I want to spend my final thank you goes out to my stepdad, Roy Bradley. Uh, Roy made a call on my behalf back in 1996 when I had decided that Gettysburg was where I wanted to be. My mother was trying to get in touch with the financial aid office, but somehow kept, they kept dodging her call or, or she was, had the wrong number. Um, I didn't realize at the time that, that, um, that Gettysburg was a Lutheran college. And so when Roy called as the, the bishop, the Lutheran bishop from the state of New Jersey, Somehow he just got patched right through, and uh, and so I appreciate you making that call, Roy. I appreciate that everything worked out in the end, and that I had the opportunity to attend Gettysburg. It has certainly made a difference in my life and my career, um, and I'm forever grateful to be a bullet. So thank you very much.